What is up you guys, C10 Danny, once again another video. With this one we are going to be going over everything you need to know about air suspension. So I'm going to be going through the links, um, the different kinds of links, your wishbone link, parallel four link, etc. Um, I'm going to, a lot of people ask me what's the difference between running valves and a valve block like that one from AccuAir. Um, and I find myself answering this question a lot, so instead of answering individually, I figured I'd go ahead and make a video. So this video is going to be cut up into sections. Um, look for timestamps in the description. That way, if you already know something and you're looking for something in particular, you can just skip to that part of the video. But regardless, this is everything you need to know about air suspension. So, here... We have our four links. So basically, in a nutshell, the ones you, need, you guys need to know about are parallel four links. So this example is for a parallel four link and a panhard bar. So essentially, what a parallel four link is, is two bars that are in parallel. And this right here is your axle. So whenever your axle is moving up and down, it's going to be moving on these bars. So these bars go up and down up and down to accommodate for your axle so the way that it works is that this side is your axle so you have one side of the bars attached to your axle and then this side would be mounted on your frame somewhere you see this one a lot this is one is actually very popular this is the one that's on GSI chassis um, it is on Porterville chassis and actually I believe chopping block chassis have a triangular four link so it's just on those two but you see a lot of shops running parallel four link that is just because it it's it's easy so each one of these links that I'm about to explain has its different kind of values pros and cons um, I'll dive deep into that later but for now this is it this is how parallel parallel four link works so basically like I said you have a bar on top of the axle a bar on the bottom welded onto a plate and that's on the axle and then this would be mounted to your frame somewhere so whenever your axle goes up and down these go up and down with it so uh, the panhard bar part is this part this little bar right here that you see this is a panhard bar so this is what it would look like from an aerial view so as you can see you have your parallel four link bars there this is symbolizing your frame rail these two in the middle and this is your panhard bar. So your panhard bar is basically just to keep your axle centered. So the pivot point on the panhard bar is as follows. So you would mount one side of the panhard bar to your axle, one side of the panhard bar to your notch or just anywhere in your frame. I'd prefer to do it to the notch. And the panhard bar's job is just to keep your axle centered whenever it's going up and down. So whenever this goes up and down, it follows the trail of the pen hard bar so you can see it there and it pivots so it goes like this and it goes like that imagine this is a pen hard bar it'll go like this and like that and that's just to keep your axle centered and in place because a lot of times these can't do it so and it helps with the axle moving either too much to one side or the other etc basically its job is just to keep your axle centered so on that same topic we have what is called a watts link you guys might have seen this crazy thing somewhere around on instagram these are very rare um because they're hard to do and they are expensive so basically a watts link's job is the exact same thing as a panhard bar is to keep your axle centered so as this is going up and down this pivot point is attached to your axle these two pivot points are free they're not attached to the axle they're actually just attached to the bars and these bars go up and down up and down so this side would be attached to the frame somewhere and this would be free free moving so that would go left and right etc whatever it is that it needs to do to accommodate for the axle moving so whenever this goes up and down these either go like this or like that to accommodate for it and your axle goes up and down so with a watts link people like it because it, the travel is different so whenever you have a watts link you're you're axle doesn't travel like this like it would with a panhard bar instead it follows an s pattern so it goes like that and like that so i know it's hard to imagine it without it be actually being in front of you but with this it keeps a much straighter 
field of travel than with a pen hard bar. Obviously, you're with your pen hard bar. Some tips that I would recommend is to make the pen hard bar as long as possible. Because whenever you have, imagine the pen hard bars travel as a circle. You have a little circle. This diameter right here has a lot more curvature than a bigger circle. A bigger circle, well, it's not a very good example. But you get the idea. A bigger circle has less of a curve, less of a bow than a smaller circle does. So if you have a longer bar, it's going to follow this trail. Opposed to if you have a little teeny tiny bar, it's going to follow much more of a curve. So you can follow that as a rule of thumb with any of your links. Whether that be your four link bars, your pan hard bar, your watts link bar, or our next topic, your triangular four links. This one is actually kind of old school, but you will still see it around. So this one is on your chop and block chassis. Um, at least for teeth dens, everything that I'm that I'm saying chassis wise as far as brands is particular to C10s. So basically the triangular four link works exactly like a parallel four link. Parallel four link, sorry except that with a triangular four link you can go ahead and mount your bars in whichever direction that you want so this is kind of rule of thumb this is what a lot of people go with but you can literally mount them however you want it so if you wanted to do them opposite you can do them like that if you didn't want to do your bottom one straight which i don't know why you wouldn't you can also do them to the sides um but this is basically how it works so whenever you do a triangular four link the way that it works is that you build a cross member of some sort and you same thing as your parallel four link you have bushings on top and bottom bushings on top and bottom and then it, there the bottom one is connected to a bar that is connected to your um, cross member and then same thing on top on top you have a bushing with a bar that is connected to the other side of the cross member so basically this does the exact same thing as your parallel four link it goes up and down um, with the exception that maybe whenever it goes up and down and you hit a bump, like let's say you're driving, this is an aerial view, imagine this is a behind view. If you're driving and you hit like a bump on one side, but you don't hit a bump on the other side, this one's going to stay planted and your other side is going to move up, right? So whenever you have something like this and they're not in parallel, whenever this bar pulls, this bar is going to pull the axle kind of up and back a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense or up and forward, sorry. So the range of travel is a lot different with a triangular four link and a parallel four link. A parallel four link will always be forward and back. So imagine this is your axle, you're with the parallel four link, it will always be forward and back like this. And then say you hit a, a, a bump on one side, it'll be like this, still, whatever. With a triangular four link, it'll be different. If you hit a bump, your front wheel will go forward a little bit just because this bar well obviously all bars they stay the same diameter um, throughout whatever range of motion so your axle moves a little different um, but that's about it that's pretty much the difference between this one and this one um, you can run any combination of the two so you can run a triangular four link with a watts link or my favorite you can run a parallel four link with a watts link or a parallel four link with a pen hard bar, triangular four link with a pen hard bar, whatever. You can run any of these with whatever combination that you wanted to. So up next is the wishbone three link. So how uh, wishbone three link works pretty much just exactly like a parallel four link works. So you will see that all these link setups, they all work kind of the same. Um, a wishbone three link has what the name implies. Instead of having two parallel bars on each side, you just have this one single piece that kind of looks like a wishbone and it's called a three link because typically you would only have three links, right? Instead of four, so instead of one, two, three, four, you have one, two, and three. So basically how it works. This wishbone and the bottom bars work just like a parallel four link. They keep your axle, they move up and down etc whenever your axle moves up and down with the exception that a wishbone three link eliminates the need for a pan hard bar so the way that it works at this bushing here these bushings here these are all solid so these all ride on a bolt and they only go up and down they only go up and down that's it they won't allow the axle this is actually the reason why a lot of people don't like wishbones this is the reason why i like it especially 
The axle is not free to move however it wants. It's not free to go like this if it wanted to. And it's not free to go, say, you hit a bump on one side or whatever. It's not It's not going to, like, rattle only on one side and the other side stay planted. So, with a wishbone, th this pivot point right here is going to be held by a nut. And this is what's going to keep your axle centered and it's going to keep your axle in place. Which making it the difference from a parallel forelink. So, the way you would mount this is with a cross member shown like this. So imagine this cross member, this is from an aerial view, this is from like a forward and back view. Um, this is the cross member. So your bottom bars would be mounted to each side here and here, and you would have like um, a bushing in here, a bushing in here, and then this would mount to your wishbone. So you'd have a bushing in here. And then your axle would pretty much be here. Your bottom bars would connect to this part of the axle. And then your top bars would connect to these parts of the axle. But it doesn't have to be like that. So you can flip this, which is how I have it. You can flip this wishbone so that it's backwards. And the only reason why you would do that is for fitment. Um, but yeah, typically this is how it's ran. Whenever you see it, that's usually how it's ran. But yeah, this is everything about the Wishbone 3 Link. So, up next, and this one's actually kind of rare to see, is what you would call a U-Bolt 2 Link. So, just like the name implies, you only have two links, so two bars. This is how it works, so you have a bar on one side, a bar on one side. They are typically under the axle, um, although it doesn't really matter. You can run it over the axle if you wanted to. I don't know why you would, but you can. And basically, just like the name implies, you have one bar on each side with a U-bolt that is holding your axle in place. And that is it. That is it. So typically, well, not typically, you have to run these with a panhard bar just because of the lack of support and the lack of links um, since you are only running two. But there's... Honestly, nothing wrong with running a U-Bolt 2 link. A lot of people don't like them for whatever reason, but you can run one if you wanted to. A lot of stock trucks, I know 67 to 72 trucks, I believe, um, came with a link set up like this. And I think C10s older than that also came with a 2 link set up like this. So, basically, like I said, all it is is just a bar with a U-Bolt at the end, and that's what's holding your axle in place. And that is it. That is it. Super simple, not complicated at all. But yeah, in a nutshell, U-Bolt to link. Next, we'll be talking about how to plumb your air ride. So, whenever you plumb your air ride, you can go one of two ways. You can go the traditional way with manual valves, or you can go with one of the newer things, which is to have a block with all the valves on it. AccuAir has one. Air Slamet has one, um, Airlift has one, a bunch of companies have one, um, and this is pretty much what it looks like. So, the traditional way, how it works is that you have your four bags, one on each corner, and then you have your tank. This can be a five gallon tank, three gallon tank, whatever, the choice is up to you. You have your tank, and then you have four valves. Well, you have eight, so for each valve, that sends air, you need a valve to release air. So, the way that would look is you would have to pair the two together. Um, it would look, well, something like this. So, let's just say, for simplification purposes, that's one valve and a little fitting. This is your other valve. That is old school shit. So, basically, that is your two, two valves. So, one of them is to send air to the bag and one of them is to release air. And that is basically how you air out. So that's how it works. And then you plumb your two air compressors. You can either run just one if you wanted to, or you can run two, which I do recommend if you have a truck or a heavier vehicle, you go ahead and run two. Because one is just gonna take forever. Um, so you run two, so you run your lines to the tank, and then from your tank, you connect your valves to it. Or you can like mount your valves wherever you want. So basically the way it would work is compressors to tank, tank to valves, valves to airbags. And that's it. That's it. Super simple. Now, the way that I'm going with, with AccuAir and whatever other company block that you have, you run your two tanks, your, your two tanks, sorry, your two compressors to your tank, and then your tank to your valve. So to your block, sorry, so you have two lines, 
Um, these are going to be the ones that are sending air to your to your valve block from the tank, and then you connect all your airlines, all your four airlines, to that valve or to that block. Sorry. So once again, you have your two compressors that are mounted to your tank. Not mounted. Sorry, they are plumbed to your tank. And then your tank, you run airline to your block, and then your block has all four valves on it, and you run those to your airbags. Super simple, super easy. So if you run it this way, you are going to have to wire each individual valve. If you run it this way, your block should come with its own wiring that should just be plug and play and should be super easy. So if you have the money for it, I really, really recommend going with something like this. And something like this is going to be way easier to diagnose. So say you have a leak, right? If you have a leak, it can only come from two places. It can come from this block or it can come from your airbags. That is it. Nothing else. If you have a leak on a setup like this, it can come from either your four bags or one of eight valves so you're gonna go and need to check each individual thing eight of them so if you have the money for it go ahead and pick yourself up one of these valve blocks believe me it is so easy so easy and you only need to mount one thing opposed to eight of these so this is basically exactly how it works no fluff no BS um, these are the two conventional ways that you can go about plumbing your air ride and that is all right guys well that is the end of today's video I'm hoping you guys were able to learn something and hopefully I was able to provide value for you guys I apologize um, if there's any kind of misinformation or anything like that um, but that is what I know about our suspension and hopefully now you do too so if there's anything that I didn't cover in the video that you felt I should have Please uh, drop me a comment. Let me know what it is that you guys want to want to know. Um, or if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and let me know. But that is the end of the video. So thank you so, so much to everybody that watches these videos. Um, thank you to everybody that drops a like, everyone that subscribes, or even just clicks on the video link to come and check these out. Um, there are a lot of new things coming for the truck within the next couple weeks, so these are going to be an exciting next couple weeks for my truck. Um, I did find a motor for the truck. Uh, I'm going to be end up going with an LS1, so I got that in the garage. Um, I'll probably make a video on that, actually. It's going to be heading out to my boy Caesar. Um, he's going to be camming the motor, and he's going to be going through it, kind of seeing what needs to be rebuilt, what needs to be replaced, because this was a straight barn find motor. But regardless, um, like I said, Everything is yet to come within the next couple weeks or so. So stay tuned if you guys want to see that. But regardless, thank you guys so, so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one.